Something I should have mentioned in the frame prep is these little snaps are required, four per side, and there's holes in the frame for them. Now, a lot of times the snaps are in okay condition and you can reuse them. You can even powder coat over them. Um, but in my case, what I did, since they were completely missing, is I bought a bunch of these on eBay, a whole bag of them, and I checked the fit when I was prepping the frame and the holes were too big. So what I did is I welded over the hole and then re-drilled it. And then I'm gonna put brand new snaps in everywhere so that the seed has uh, a new snaps to secure to. You do that and it'll be an, a good solid fit. Uh, sometimes these guys collapse. Uh, people try and grab them with, uh, with pliers and the sides gets collapsed. So. You can buy these. Again, I bought them on eBay. Blackwood Motorsport also sells them on their, you know, for their rups. So you can get them. We got the seat installed. I just drilled uh, number 30 drill bit holes for my snaps that I bought on eBay. And the seat I got on eBay also. Uh, seems like a nice quality seat. The only thing I was missing was the foam. I have some high density foam, three inch tall high density foam that I, uh, I don't know where I got it. And I just traced it out with a piece of paper then cut it on a bandsaw. Easy squeezy and now we have a nicely installed seat. So I have the handlebars on the bike and the reason it's on the ground is because I like to sit my butt on the seat and then I can get a feel for where the handlebars need to be adjusted. But let's talk about the controls and what we're using. As I discussed, these are cherry levers. You can, you can purchase these brand new. This is typically what was on these bikes. These grips are not stock Speedway grips. These are much nicer and much softer. Um, they're trail, what I would call trail grips. Uh, I really like these. I put them on all my bikes. They feel really good. Uh, kill switch. This is a DB30 kill switch. Um, I buy these on eBay. I really like these, they're, they're nice. They got a big button. Uh, so when my stupid friends get on and they need to turn the bike off, there's no confusion. They can grab that. As for throttles, again, I don't use the original Cherry style throttles. This is a DB30 throttle um, that I'll be using with the slide carb. These are inexpensive and work really well. They're basically copied after XR75 throttles. Really like these. I Again, I put them on all my bikes. That's all going on here right now. Since the handlebars are all done with all the hardware mounted, we might as well just route the cables and hook them up to the actual brakes. Now, in order to do these Grim Cub brakes, you're going to need some parts. This one's missing the cable adjuster there. So I have this one here which is probably perhaps a bicycle style adjuster, but fits in there really nice and it'll work well. I buy these on eBay. You also need the Grimka um, cable stops. They go in here and secure the cable to the brake lever. You'll need two of those. Again, I buy those on eBay, but um, that old school mini bike guy also has them. And I get these. Uh, this is actually a bicycle part. And when you cut the cable off, um, you slip these over the ends and, and crimp it with a pair of needle nose pliers so the ends of your cables don't fray and look silly. And then this is the last tool. Uh, this is a cable cutting tool. Uh, it's actually a bicycle tool, but you see how it cuts the cable from all sides. And this is what you want, where a regular pair of dikes kind of cuts the cable from just two sides and it squeezes it out and causes the end to fray. So this is the best way to not only cut the sheathing if you need to, but also uh, the cable itself. All right, I have the rear brake all attached and with the lever it springs back nice now 
This spring is something I didn't mention. That's this thing right here. This is actually a pinball shooter rod spring. The red variety, the strongest variety. I use this because I have a ton of them around. Actually, there's probably a better version of this that's um, not quite so big in diameter. This is like 3 8 inside diameter. But this works well for me and I have a bunch of them around. What this does is it allows you to implement a brake switch. So you put this in the middle of the cable and as you squeeze the brake, these two pieces compress. And if you look at it, the piece of rubber keeps them insulated, but as they compress, the two pieces of this ring go together and essentially gives you a little brake switch. I took my multimeter, put it on buzz tone, low resistance, and hooked it up with a couple alligator clips to the brake light indicator switch. Listen to the buzz tone as I hit the brake lever. Hear it? So as I compress the brake lever, it would complete the path of power to my rear tail light. 